Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in St. Charles, Illinois at the Indian Uprising Pontiac Car Show. We have a legendary Pontiac with you, literally a movie Pontiac with you. And I'm with the historians of Knight Rider with Kit. I'm with Joe, and your uh, last name? Joe Huth. Joe Huth, AJ? AJ Palmgren. AJ Palmgren. And guys, so uh, tell me, first of all, what do we have here today? AJ? We have Kit from Knight Rider. Not a car that's made to look like Kit, but the actual car, Kit, from Knight Rider. One of one about of, 19 used to produce the original television show. One of five that have survived. One Correct. of five. One so, of five. So the short version, because we've got tons of memorabilia on this car, how do you get a Kit? About 20 some years of research, obsessive research, <laughs> a lot of work, hunting people down and doing research to figure out where the car came from and is it real and why. And this is and, real. And that's before we have any money. And this is, <laughs> and this is real. This it's is real. real. And it's this real is the deal. Gets. So come on over right. side me. Let's get right to our featured attraction. The real kit from Knight Rider. And I just want to show you when it's the real kit, that's... That's Hollywood prop right there. That's real. Those are the ones you've seen on TV. Just like it was coming at us on the screen. So guys, tell me, I mean, Kit's got all kinds of little gadgets, all kinds of little toys. What are some of the uh, things that have drawn you to the car to be such historians of this car? Well, the modifications on this car were done specifically for the shooting of the show. And no other car has things like this. So, things where should like, we start, Joe? Well, let's start with the beefy quarter inch uh, skid plate underneath to protect yes, the drivetrain. Yes, have train. a look at that under there if you dare. If you can get under there. Oh, I can get under there. Okay, so we've got this skid plate here. Yeah, there's a skid plate under there to protect the car during uh, stunts. Hand welded on. We've got underneath the front bumper, there's a camera tow bar receiver underneath here. <clears throat> and this this receiver would have been hooked up to a camera car and it would have allowed them to pull the car while they were filming on the inside. And these things were hand bolted, hand welded on, no two are alike, and, it's, it, and we can easily tell that it was done 35 years ago. And you can see there, now. there's that flat plate, plate we have, almost like a Jeep, where exactly. they put that plate under it so yeah. it doesn't get smacked. Right. Okay. I know everybody wants to jump in the kit. One thing I didn't realize about your kit is it has a little flare right here. Yeah, those are actually factory Trans Am flares, and that was part of the design, the, the look of kit. Those. Uh, those are factory from uh, from GM, from Pontiac. Now, although the paint on the front of the car is, you know, kind of almost airbrushed on, the rest of the car's paint job looks really slick. So I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that this was the original paint that the car had on it. Unfortunately, um, and fortunately, the previous owner did a fantastic job of stripping off 17 layers, <laughs> 17 layers which of is, paint, and then repainted it. Which is why the front looked like that. That's right. 17 layers of paint and repainted the entire thing. So the fiberglass nose on the front, since he did this about 15 years ago, absorbed some moisture, and that's why you see those bubbles there. Uh, okay. Well, one of the areas that you always want to come in. AJ, I'm going to have you kind of, first of all, let me give people the overall Please. look of the interior of Kit. Now, this was a real Kit car, but this interior was recreated, correct? That is correct. It's part of another chapter in this car's history, which is important to understand. Now, were these real? Obviously, these are the real towers. Those are factory stickers, yes. So, I mean, was this part of finding the real kit? Uh, part of the whole uh, experience? And I'm noticing this is kind of squeezed down a little bit, just so that my wife knows that me and Michael Hasselhoff have sat in the exact same spot. I'm going to take our time. But this is all recreated to be just like the so, car. The majority of the electronics that you're looking at 
were created after the show was canceled by the man that owned this car after the, after the show was canceled. His name is Carl Casper. He displayed this car after the show was canceled on tours to continue to promote the show. He had a contract with Universal Studios during the filming of Knight Rider to promote Knight Rider. He was somebody who was producing replica tour cars and toured them at the Bush Beer World of Wheels Auto Ram kind of events uh, throughout 1983, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, after the show was over, he ended up with four of the surviving uh, four of the five surviving original cars and the one and none of them had dashes at the time and so the dash that you see and the buttons you're looking at right now were not ever used in the show they were put in after the fact some were put in by Carl Casper in 1987 88 some of them were put in by us because there was absolutely nothing there and we wanted to make it look a little bit nicer it's important to understand the difference between what the replica parts were and the things that were actually from it used in the show so multiple chapters in this car's history is a very important thing to understand about its originality that's wonderful this is great I feel like I'm, you know, ready to jump something in this car, actually, as I sit here. Okay, I'm going to, um, I want to show, we will do that. Okay, we've got a key here. Tell me why this, why this key is here. So that is, that is a locking hood mechanism on the, uh, on the, on the studio, what we've learned is uh, the guys who were in charge of the cars, the transportation department and others, wanted to make certain that uh, people who were unauthorized didn't get under the hood and mess with things. And so they put locking mechanisms on these. These locking mechanisms actually came out of an earlier Ford truck and uh, they were all key to light. And with that being all, said, all the ones that survived let's, were all uh, key to light. We're going to open the hood. Uh, Joe, if you could open the hood. AJ, jump in. I want to show Kit's known for doing its 180s, right? <laughs> yes. So yes, we'll open the hood. We're gonna open the hood. Okay. And then I want you to show that button there too. So there's this little floor button here. See that floor button? Right. Let me focus in on that. Yes. So you know, any 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 car head that understands you know 60s and 70s automobiles would recognize that as a uh, as a dimmer switch. Right. But this is a 1982. The headlight dimmer switch is right here on the steering column. And, you know, most people that know these cars would know that. So why on earth is there a dimmer switch on the, on the, on the floorboard? Well, this was actually installed by the stunt guys. Uh, the most famous of which is Jack Gill. He was a stunt coordinator for Knight Rider. And so this, this button activates something called a line lock. And it's basically a hydraulic valve that locks the... that, that uh, closes the master cylinder's pressure to the front brakes only. So it basically locks out the front lines. And so depending on whether the the hydraulic, you know, whether the uh, the, the factory car brake pedal is depressed yes. when you activate it or released when you activate it, you either lock out the pressure from the front brakes or you lock in the pressure from the front brakes. Show us how that works and I want to show that light that it comes on. Okay. Because you have to turn the car on to have this happen. Um, I don't think we have to start it, no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> So here we go. We just turn this on. You hear that buzzer? I do. That buzzer was put in by the stunt guys so that they would know, hey, the line lock is on, so if you step on the brakes, they're going to do something different. You know, they had to, they had to get these thing. shots. Yeah, that's kid's voice box is supposed to go there, folks, but behind it is actually the real light that they put in this car. To let you know that that brake was set. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. So just so that you could see that, the uh, the replica voice box that we that is in front of that that's been removed just for your benefit. So there you go. There we go. There you go. Let's while you're in it, let's turn it on. Let's show kid under the hood. It is on. Well, I mean actual turning the car. Oh, on. oh, oh, oh. we're going to start this. Line lock <laughs> off on a steering wheel. So would you uh, connect the battery, Joe? Just turn the, the knob. Turn the knob. Connect the battery, Joe. Redone. I apologize. Oh. There we go. Let me just see you press the brake lights. There's our kid brakes. Give it one rev. Alright, we'll shut that down. All right, we'll open that up. Go ahead.
<laughs> we make sure we don't get thrown out of the show. All right. There we go. So now, does kid have a fender tag on it or something like that? Is how did you guys? Is that all on the door? Yeah, I mean, he's got. Um, he does have the the standard VIN tag and the other, you know, standard Trans Am labels here. So it's a 305. Yeah. So what you're looking at is the actual factory 305. A lot of the cars that they they would remove the original engines and put them up with 350s, but this particular car still has its original 305 motor in it. They did replace the was a metric 200 transmission with a turbo 350 mm. for reliability and then other modifications they you know they removed all the emissions equipment that came on a standard 1982 trans am yeah because i was going to say you can see the engine on this uh yeah trans -Am, where usually you can't do that yeah there would normally be air tubes here and an air pump all that has been removed they swapped out the computer controlled uh, quadrajet for mm -hmm. a vacuum one. Same with the distributor. They put a vacuum advanced distributor on it. Obviously they pretty changed much the air cleaner. Changed the air cleaner. They basically removed all of the computer out of this car. And all of the emissions they because they didn't have to meet emissions because they weren't going to be publicly on the road. So, so, so w it's funny. We've taken, we get together. So we've taken the computer out of. Ch out we took out the of computer out, out of kit, kit because <laughs> as you pointed out, kit. Sorry, folks. Is a prop. So and this he's is not real. the prop. <laughs> so well, to they, us, he is. They take, <laughs> the computer, the computer, take a computer out of the night rider. Take that's the computer right. out of the oh, night rider okay, car. And actually, that is the irony of it because the, 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 the stuff, the stunts that they did were actually remarkably mechanical and remarkably low tech and incredibly genius. Ingenious and genius. I'm amazed at the things that we've learned about how the guys that put together the show, the stunt guys get the stunt guys get stuff. Uh, the transportation guys, they did all these modifications on these cars to make Kit look like he really was doing those awesome things that we saw on the television screen. And the way they did that was incredibly mechanical. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. <laughs> Speaking of beautiful, one of the things that I absolutely delight is usually those who watch the channel know I have a trunk and treat. Well, here we've got a table and treat. So now this is your guys' book. Yeah, this was written our first book back in 2002. Um, we went through and interviewed uh, two dozen people, cast and crew members. Uh, got some really great stories, some behind so, so the scenes photos. So people can order this on the, uh, Amazon. Yeah, they can. Could okay. you can get some used ones? I think for a few more this, bucks. Is this? These are these are actually uh, vintage T-shirt transfers. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. We we you came into all side. You take your iron and you you turn it oh, upside down. Goodness. You place yeah. it. You rub an iron on it, and you have yourself a Night Rider T-shirt. Tell me what we have here. So these are a bunch of behind-the-scenes photos from a second season episode called Custom Kit. And what you're looking at here is some of the crew members getting ready to outfit Kit. In that episode, he had flames and some side pipes. You so you see flames being put yeah, on. Yeah, they have kit. magnetic flames they're putting on. And if you look down here, we've got um, the side, side pipes. pipes they've added. I like regular Kit. Yeah, this is this is uh, one of the stunt cars. Uh, you can see by the, the round stunt wheel. It's not the Knight Rider stunt wheel. Or right. Knight Rider wheel. Legos. Yeah, you got your Lego. This just came out last year, the Which Lego is interesting Dimensions. interesting that it came out last year from a show in 1984. Well, the, the show is super... Right? 80, 1982 it premiered, 82. 1982 to 86. And the show is more popular now than it's ever been, I think. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's iconic. So here's a Cheerios box, time period correct. It is. Wow. It is a 30-some-year-old Cheerios box. I believe this was 84. With when this came Knight out, and the Night Rider, and so of course we have it because of the Night Rider poster that's included in one of them. So you know, as a kid, it wasn't this Cheerios box; it was actually Golden Graham cereal that made, made, reached my community. And so I insisted that Mom let me buy six boxes, and she says, "Okay, son, but you have to eat them all." Of course, <laughs> yeah, that's because a good I wanted mom. to make certain that we got at least the right poster because I didn't want those other posters like Care Bears on there. Yeah. So no offense to the. The three, the three D Viewmaster. <laughs> Talking Viewmaster, yeah, that Talking was, yeah. Talking Viewmaster. Oh, yeah. Those are some Night Rider soundtracks, and uh, the one below it is a German uh, release, and it's an audio recording of an episode. Wow. And then this is that's the, the Parker Brothers, the official board game that came out in 1983. The high speed adventure game. The high speed, based on the hit TV series. That is great. Yeah, and then we've got uh, the the re-release of the uh, 125th scale. 
plastic model that came out uh, just a few years ago. So a mixture of vintage and newer right. release toys and, and, and memorabilia from the show. And I'm going to preview this and say you're going to see some stuff, Knight Rider fans, that you've actually never seen before on camera. That's Number correct. one, these rocks are not rocks. What are they? They're actually called styrolite. Shall we? Shall we? So Does it come off. There we go. But these rocks came go. from somewhere. Where'd they come from? Well, when we were restoring one of the original cars. So let me back up. So what styrolite is? When it was, uh, when the show was being filmed, whenever you'd see Kit crash through a brick wall or run over some boulders, they weren't actually concrete and real boulders. What? They were styrolite. I know, right. shocking, isn't it? Shocking. Right. Kit, I mean, you know, right. Kit had to appear indestructible. Right. Right. Kit was it, indestructible. Yeah. But and we've got a plate on the bottom of them, so all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so what they did is they took the styrolite, which is kind of like styrofoam, and they painted it to look like bricks. And Kit would crash through them, and no one would be the wiser. When we were restoring one of the original cars, we found that this styrolite wedged in the control arm underneath from one real of the slots. Real movie rock. Real, real movie styrolite. rock. Styrolite. Exactly. So we put so, it in a case like a moon rock. Yes. Because we think it's that special cool. to us. Now, what do we have here? That is a slate from a first season episode, uh, Nobody Does It Better. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, we, we, we acquired this. And we believe that it was in the storage location of uh, this particular cameraman. Uh, Robert Betts, and uh, I actually had the privilege of showing this to Bob Brauver, who was the director of this particular yeah. episode, and I have a picture of him holding this, and he wouldn't have seen it since he directed that episode 35 years ago. Or is it 36 him, now? Tell him my yeah. California car. All right, so, well, car, of course, is Kit's evil twin from two of the episodes of the original series, Trust Doesn't Rust and Kit vs. Car. For Kit vs. Car, the, <laughs> the crew put this license plate on the car. And about two years ago, I bought sight unseen about 400 prop license plates from an abandoned Los Angeles storage locker. And these, this car plate happened to be inside of it. So that was a home run. It was totally a home run. That was a home run. Yeah, in addition to this plate, we also found these other background plates. Uh, this, this one was used in Lost Night. This one was used in Hearts of Stone. So, you know, it's, it's the, those little pieces of Knight Rider history that just kind of would have been lost forever if, if uh, we didn't run across it. Hey, Jay, what is this? I think Joe needs to answer that question. Okay, Joe, let it fly. All right, so that is a, an original screen-used voice box panel. This is where on the show you'd see Kit talking right here. Um, this, that's one of the original panels from the show. And did that come off one of the stage dashes? These? At the time? Yes. So I want to get every little piece of what it says in there. Kind of actual regular car. Alternator, oil pressure, temperature. Pretty much, yeah. Normal auto cruise. What is this? This clock. So uh, in the uh, fall of 1984, they, uh, this was a cast and crew gift that was oh, given to... Christmas time. Yeah, Christmas time. Christmas of uh, 1984. So you can see, it's not obvi obviously a real license plate, it's a lot smaller, but you can see... It's also it the has, wrong style for... The, yeah, it's for, the wrong style for Knight Rider, but you can see it has uh, reproduced signatures for David Hasselhoff, who played Michael Knight, Edward Mulher, who played Devin Miles, uh, Patricia McPherson, who played Bonnie Barstow, and Jack Gill, the stunt coordinator for the show. And what's so special about this is it wasn't done by a fan in more recent years. It was actually done back in the day by the crew, for, by a member of the crew, for the crew as a gift. So it has very historical significance. All right, so that is uh, a center insert for a different, a, a different genre of Knight Rider. So some could argue it may not fit on this particular table, but this is from the 1991 made-for-TV movie, Knight Rider 2000, when Kit looks a little bit like a red Pontiac Banshee and all of a sudden has forgotten that he prefers basic black and is now a red, very different-looking Dodge <laughs> Stealth modified to look like a Pontiac Banshee. Anyway, real fans of the show would actually recognize what this is. And yes, this is actually the one that was one of the... I don't know if there was more than one used on the... On the on the set, but this is definitely one that was used on the set, not a replica made wheel. more recently for a center of the steering wheel, yes. What do we have here? So we've got some cast and crew pins that were given out. Uh, this is, yeah, this one says David Hasselhoff on it. We don't know what year these are from, but these were both cast and crew pins. So again, gifts to the cast and crew from the cast and crew. The Knight Rider caps. Yeah, cast and crew. Yeah, you've got your Knight Rider. This is a baseball cap, that's a golf cap. Cast. 
Here's our Lego. The more modern gift to us, actually, from, from a fan. Yes. yes. Now, this is something. Tell me what this is. So, uh, you know, there's a couple episodes of the show where Michael Knight hands his business card to whoever. This is one of the actual business cards that were given to uh, people, you know, during the filming of an episode. So it's, uh, a, it's a prop. It's a prop. Yeah, it's a prop from an episode. Uh, the prop ma one of the prop masters from the show, who's uh, no longer with us, uh, he's the one that saved them for all these years. So we, we were lucky to, to acquire one. And we have. So that is a um, a crew vehicle placard. Whenever the crew was filming on location, they would put those placards in the window of the crew yeah. vehicles. Now, I want to, before I go here, tell me about this photograph, because this is unique. Where'd this come from? So, that came from uh, Gino Grimaldi. He was a producer on the series. Let me just do that real quick. Yeah. He was a producer on the series, and he had pa unfortunately passed away a number of years ago. And, they, and this is his actual... Yeah, this, this was his actual clipboard that he used on set. Now, how do you get that clipboard? We, um... <laughs> we contacted uh, Gino's daughter, actually. We found Gino's daughter, a uh, super gracious woman, uh, wonderful to talk to, and she said that uh, they were getting ready to clean out um, her mother and her father's house after living there for so many years. While you guys are talking, I want to show some of these pictures. These are never before seen pictures. That, that were, were from her, her personal collection her of personal Gino collection. Grimaldi. Go ahead. So this is the, the producers. The there's pro Gino. Yeah, there's Gino. Um, yeah, this this is from his personal collection. Um, his These daughter, haven't been shown before, correct? No, they've no. never been shown before. His daughter, um, you know, was cleaning out their house, and she she asked if uh, we'd like to take ownership of these and, uh, and be their caretaker. So we were honored for her to, uh, you know, to ask us, and um, we're pleased to add them to our collection. Yeah, that's great. And notice the hair. It's oh, that's a, some fantastic mid '80s hair. That's, that's that was '80s. That is fantastic. There, there's a not before seen shot of Mr. Hasselhoff there, being himself. <laughs> Having some fun. Very much being himself. On set, probably taken by Gino himself of what it looked like. A second shot, and this is the whole cast right here, also from his photograph collection. And now you'll see why I say the Knight Rider chair for hair. Correct. Because you have to have great hair. Now, all you of have to have great goes hair. goes back to this photograph here. So this is a one-of-one one photograph. Tell me what we have here. This is one of the extremely rare times when David Hasselhoff and William Daniels were photographed together. Now, this, tell, tell them what William Daniels did. William Daniels was the voice of Kit for the show. And he would always, you know, he was ne never really on set when they were filming. He would come in later and, and record his lines in a studio. So it was very rare for David Hasselhoff and William Daniels to be together. But this photo was taken at the 1982 Christmas party where they had... First met. Where they had first met. And uh, someone immortalized it in a picture. Just and read that because it's signed. So too. it says, "This is this is actually David signing this." Gino, who who is this guy? With an arrow. David Hasselhoff with an arrow. Who is this guy? And uh, and this is uh, this is this is William Daniels saying, "It's just you and me, kid." Bill Daniels, A.K.A. Kit. A.K.A. Gino, it's just it, it's so these so both of them signed this for Gino in 1982. In 1982, and, and now we have Gino's. One time he was not only a producer but he was a director. Correct. So show us what we have here, which hasn't been seen before either. So the scripts, of course, are definitely available. Copies of scripts have been available on on, on eBay for quite some time. But this was actually Gino's. This was Gino's personal folder. Real that writing. He, that he made his own notes in for this particular episode. Let me let you just flip a couple of those carefully, because that's just paper. It is just paper. It is special paper. That's cute right there. Historical paper. Look at that. Good, because I'm starving. This is a federal so, operation. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have here? Crew jackets, Joe. Yeah, so this is a uh, representation of the crew jackets throughout the years of the show. They change them each year. Each year they got a new jacket. 
And so this the first one, one you this saw, one, this, this one is this one is, special. this one is Gino's. This one was Gino's. Gino did wear this, and so we got this from Gino's daughter. With all of this. With Correct. all of this. Yes. These others belong to other cast and crew members, some of which we know where they came from, some of which we do not. And who and who've been kind enough to give you those? G Correct. Yes. Uh, occasionally we find one, you know, from that's passed through hands, and they don't know whose it was, and we pay them for it. What is that? Go ahead, Joe. So. Uh, from 1983 through the end of the 90s, Universal Studios in Hollywood had uh, a kit car on display over the water, and visitors could come sit in the car, and they'd have uh, someone remote off stage that would talk to pretend to be Kit. This is one of the flags that actually flew over the car. They had probably about six of them, and uh, and uh, we found that on eBay. All right, gather up, guys. My final questions here. So, how long have you two guys? Both of you are married. I'm married. Yes. I'm not. I'm the, I'm the crazy single guy. Right, I'm married with two kids. Guy. And yeah. your wife is okay with AJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Because yeah. I mean, you guys are like brothers when you're talking about this car. How did you guys get to be number one, such love of the car fans? I mean, just growing up, it was just your thing, or what? Tell me how that happened. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, you know, the first time I saw the television show, I, I was a Dukes of Hazard fan. Uh, you know, when I was in fourth grade, and, and, and you know what. What he, what boy wasn't? You know, you see a car fly through the air, and yeah. it's just all kinds of adrenaline and excitement. Yeah, you get a charger flying and, through, no problem. And, <laughs> and and so the first time I saw Night Rider, I was a bit skeptical because there was uh, some promotions at the time that compared it to the Dukes of Hazzard, and I thought, ah, no, that's not going to be any good. I saw it, and I was absolutely hooked because the combination of the adrenaline of this car flying through the air, as well as all the computerized stuff, which we just talked about, yeah, as all, well as all the computerized stuff, captivated my imagination like nothing else did before. And Joe, your story is very similar. Uh, it's very similar. Now, I'm about uh, 10 years younger than AJ, so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have the privilege to really watch the show when it was originally on. So and how did it happen that you got so hooked after? Well, a, Good magi reruns. a magical thing <laughs> called syndication. Yes. Um, the show, uh, in, the late, uh, in the late 80s, there was a station called WWOR out of Secaucus, New Jersey and they would play reruns of Knight Rider every single day in two or three hour blocks. <laughs> so wow. I would come home from school and I would watch Knight Rider and it hooked me. And it was the same deal, it was, it's the car, it's the... So how did you guys, 10 years apart, hook up and go, we are now the Knight Rider historians? Back in the day, around uh, <laughs> late 90s, early 2000s, before Facebook, we had, there were things like web boards where people would just chat and talk publicly, a lot like a Facebook group now. Yeah but without pictures, just all text. And so back then I would actually, you know, got on these things and chatted publicly. And after a couple of years, it became very evident uh, that there were just a few of us who were actually very serious about the history and maybe not necessarily the fan fiction or bickering or other things like that, that's, you know, just human nature. And so basically, I we just kind of noticed like, well, this guy's kind of serious like I am, and he noticed the same about me. And you guys And connected. so, after a yep. while, we just decided, you know, we need to kind of do a book together. And that just kind of led to us being the unofficial Knight Rider historians, which I should point out is a self-proclaimed title. However, I, I no one's ever argued people, with us. Yeah, That's right. I think most people, if they're watching this, would go, you get the title. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, yes. a real treat to be on My Car Story. What a great opportunity. We love Kit. The thanks honor's for being ours. On the, thanks, Thank you, Lou. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.